My name is Donna Rhodes and I am a principal research scientist in the Socio-Technical Systems Research Center here at MIT and I'm the director of a research group called the Systems Engineering Advancement Research Initiative or CERI. So socio-technical systems are systems that are delivering societal value in some way and as our world becomes more interconnected these types of systems are uh, more prevalent now in terms of the concerns that we have to deal with. How do we interconnect these types of systems? How do we orchestrate the policies that apply? How do people collaborate in these types of endeavors? A socio-technical system example could be something like a multimodal transportation system where you have buses and subways and trains and you have control stations and you have agencies that help to oversee these. Another example could be energy distribution where you have electrical energy and gas and pipelines and you have boards that control things. You have people that have smart metering in their houses. This whole interconnectivity of things is really driving how we have to architect these systems and how we evolve them over time. Some of the societal issues that we care about are things like providing people with transportation, providing people with energy, providing, say, security. One of the systems I've worked on in my research is one where it's a maritime system of systems that's protecting a border. So the system itself consists of things like aircraft, both manned aircraft and unmanned aircraft or drones. It consists of ground stations and radars. It consists of ships, um, all kinds of, of different assets that would be used to protect the security of a coastal border. Being able to pull a system like that together means that you're going to be looking at how do you fit these constituent parts together, for one thing, and then secondly, you really have to reflect on the fact that this system is going to exist over a long period of time and change will happen. In a socio-technical system, we take a little bit different perspective on things like policy, these um, external factors. In classical engineering, we might think of policy, for example, as a constraint. But when we take the socio-technical systems perspective, we open up that space and we say maybe policy is something that we can influence. Some of our work on socio-technical systems has been looking at what we can do as far as taking an architecting approach to these. How do we think about these constituent pieces that come together and how do we think about their evolvability over time? Systems constantly change and improve but one can only really re-architect a system at specific periods over time. In our research here at MIT, we have also been looking at the properties of such systems, such as are they adaptable, are they resilient, are they evolvable. And in some of the work that we've been doing, we are both studying these types of systems and trying to determine different design principles that one could use in the actual design of the systems themselves over time to actually make it more predictive that your system can be adapted, your system can be evolved. We see powerful partnerships in how we can understand these systems and then make these systems provide better value to our stakeholders over time. 